Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be discussing necrotic tissues. So what is necrosis? What are the signs and symptoms and how we treat it? But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel. So let's get started. So what is necrosis. So necrosis is the death of cells in living tissues caused by external factors, okay? So these external factors can be infection, trauma, or toxins, okay? Now, this is not apoptosis that happens naturally within the body. So apoptosis is the planned cell death, okay? Whereas necrosis is always detrimental to the health of the patient and it can sometimes be fatal okay typically cells die as a result of necrosis they don't when when they start to build up okay when it's caused by necrosis they're not signaling um phagocytes so phagocytes actually ingest and eat dead cells so when it happens by necrosis this signal really doesn't happen and we have a buildup of tissue and dead cells. So necrotic tissue, it does delay wound healing, okay? Um, and so we do need to be removing this necrotic tissue because we don't have the phagocytes eating the dead cells. It needs to be removed to have tissue growth, okay, to actually heal that wound. So this is known as debridement. When substantial areas become necrotic because of a lack of blood supply, this is known as gangrene, okay? So symptoms, what are we going to see? So there are two means of symptoms um, and well, two main types of necrotic tissue, okay, that will present. Um, so we have our eschar. So this is our black, thick, leathery tissue. It's often tan, brown, or black. So we can see that right here. So see the black, that's the eschar. Now our slough, it's normally yellow, tan, green, brown, and it may be moist, okay? It's loose and stringy to the appearance. Um, so that would be kind of like in this area. It does look a little bit moist. I was trying to get a picture that had both in it. Um, but if you ever see, it's most of the time, it's really like kind of loose. It, it looks wet. That is our slough, okay? They're both necrotic tissue. Both need to be removed for that wound to heal, okay? Wounds cannot heal with this material on it, okay? Um, I, I always kind of think it's funny because I've gone in and looked at wounds um, that other nurses have dressed or patients were dressing themselves. So they were using all these like antimicrobials on their wound but there was like a layer of slough for eschar and it's like okay well this isn't going to do anything if that layer is there we can't treat the wound if we're treating the scab right it's not going to get through properly unless we're treating the slough um through uh like different types of debridement that's different. But if we're if we're literally just slapping an antimicrobial on there, hoping it's going to do something that's not, this tissue needs to be removed. We need to get down to viable tissue. This is just dead tissue, right? It's just dead tissue. We need to get down to that viable tissue. So etiology. So necrosis can be caused by a number of external sources. So injury, infection, cancers, infarction. So infarction when um, blood supply is cut off um, to an area causing cell death, um, poisons, um, inflammation, okay? These can all cause necrosis, tissue death, okay? So treatment and interventions. So we want to prevent necrosis in 
at-risk patients, okay? So to minimize complications. So first off, we want to maintain a moist wound environment. Now, I know previously people, and I still get this all the time, oh, I got to let my wound air out. No, no, we do not need to let our wounds air out. We want to maintain a moist wound environment, prevent dehydration, prevent drying. Okay, this is what promotes wound healing. When we have necrotic tissue, it takes so much longer for that wound to actually heal. We need to keep a moist wound environment. We have so many new bandages, new technology that shows and that we can use to prevent the drying of these wounds. So treatment of necrosis, it typically involves two distinct steps, okay? First, we have to treat the underlying cause. So what is causing the tissue death, okay? Um, is it poor circulation? Um, do we need to administer antibiotics? Do we need to be moving a patient more frequently because the pressure on the wound area, okay? That if there is too much pressure on a wound area, this, the tissue is going to die, okay? So once we figure out the cause, once we treat the cause, then we can fix the problem, okay? So then we'll have to remove the dead tissue, okay? Like I said before, we cannot treat scabs, okay? We cannot treat dead tissue. We have to remove that. We have to remove the dead tissue to be able to treat the wound. Okay, so I'll go over all the different methods of managing the necrotic tissue, okay? So through the um, debridement. So there are different debridement methods that we can use. Um, I'll just briefly go through them here. I know I'm quite small. Sorry. I just had so much information to pack in on this slide. So first off, autolytic debridement. So this is the softening of the necrotic tissue. So we accomplish this by um, using dressings that, that either add or donate moisture to the wound. Okay. Um, so then this also uses um, the wound's own fluid to break down the necrotic tissue, okay? Um, so semi-occlusive or occlusive dressings are primary, primarily used for this, okay? Mechanical debridement, okay? Now, this is used less often, and I'll explain why. So this is your wet to dry dressings, okay? Now, what happens is we're really ripping off the tissue, okay? Now, this is not selective. So unfortunately, it's not selective, and that's why it's not used very often. Plus, it's extremely painful. Think about this. It's like ripping off a scab. It hurts, okay? Mechanical debridement is not selective, so it is hurting our new freshly grown tissue also, okay? It doesn't select between new, good growth, and the unvitalized tissue. That's why it's so painful, so, so painful. This is not something that I personally ever use in my practice, okay? It hurts. It's not something I would use. Some cases, doctors do do this. Not my choice. Sharp debridement. This is Personally, my favorite, it is quick. This method involves trimming away necrotic tissue, either using sterile scissors and forceps, a scalpel, curettes, okay? Um, it can be done at a patient's bedside, in a treatment room, really can be done anywhere. You're just getting rid of the tissue that is no good, okay? So we're really not going down to vitalize tissue, so it shouldn't hurt the patient, okay? This really should not be something that's causing them pain. I mean, it can be a little bit uncomfortable because sometimes we do nick a little bit too far. It does happen with sharp debridement, but really what we're trying to do is just remove the the tissue that is no good, okay? Now, sometimes we do need to do this uh, multiple times. 
Um, but it is a very effective way to jump start wound healing. Okay. Um, other debridement methods, they can take a, quite some time, like autolytic debridement, it's going to take a while to accomplish, whereas sharps or surgical debridement, it's quite quick, um, which brings us to surgical debridement. So this is normally performed in an operating room under general or local anesthetic. Um, normally, the wound is much larger. Um than where you just, what you had seen before. Um, this is because clear margins are needed, okay? Um, this can be in the case of when you have like a, a bad infection and they need to cut it all out. But this method, it does allow the wound to heal much quicker, even though it is bigger after they have removed it, it allows the wound to heal so much faster because that infection is gone, the necrotic tissue is gone, and now we can actually heal the wound, okay? It is more expensive to do surgical debridement. That is why it is only really reserved for large and badly infected wounds. And then next we have larva or maggot therapy. Now, this one, some people are totally grossed out by Obviously, we cannot use this therapy on people who are absolutely grossed out. <laughs> They're not going to let you put the maggots on them. They're really not. So these maggots have been uh, raised in a sterile environment. So it's not just maggots from a trash can. If they have been made uh, in a sterile environment, and they will successfully debride necrotic wounds. So they actually secrete an enzyme which breaks down necrotic tissue, allowing the maggots to ingest the necrotic tissue, okay? Um, maggots do not consume healthy tissue, only the bad tissue. So that's what's honestly great about them because how they work is they just get rid of the necrotic tissue, keeping that healthy tissue to have a perfect wound, optimize healing so we can start healing those wounds, okay? So once again, like I said, wounds with necrotic tissue will not heal. So we need to be using one of these methods to get rid of the necrotic tissue, um, whichever one we decide is the best um, for the patient but removal is necessary. It will also uh, decrease bacterial burden on the wound, allowing healthy tissue to grow. So that is all that I have for this video, guys. I hope it did give you lots of information on necrotic wounds and how we treat them. Um, but like I said, that's all I have for this video. I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now.